going to talk about rate of reactions and see exactly how the two are related. So let's look at the following elementary equation. Now we begin with two reactants, X and Y, and they convert into W and Z. What elementary simply means is that they convert from reactants to products in a single step. Elementary reactions are some of the most basic reactions out there. Now notice that A, B, C, and D are coefficients of each respective molecule, and they represent the number of molecules, or moles. Now rates of reactions tell you how quickly reactants become products. So how quickly X and Y become W and Z. In other words, the rate can be found by the change in concentration of reactant over some given time. Now notice that we go from a positive amount or some amount to a smaller amount. So over time, our X and Y will disappear. So therefore, the rates of these guys are negative because remember, we're subtracting our initial from final. An initial concentration of X is larger than final concentration of X. The final will be less. We'll have less X and Y at the end because some of these guys will convert to W and Z. <coughs> so once again, the rate or average rate of X is negative change in concentration of X over time. Now time is also multiplied by A. Now for the case that A, B, C, and D are 1, we simply take away the A because 1 times T is T. So the same thing can be said for W, uh, for Y. The negative change in concentration of Y over BT gives you the rate of disappearance of Y. Now the rate of appearance of W and Z can be given by these formulas, where now we have the positive, because these guys appear, and so these guys will both be positives. Now, let's look at the factors affecting our reaction rates. So we already said that temperature affects our rates of reaction because it affects our rate constant. Now if the rate constant increases, then our rate of reaction increases. And we'll see why at the end of this lecture. But notice that temperature, increasing temperature, affects rate constant by affecting the kinetic energy of molecules. On average, molecules will have higher kinetic energy and a higher temperature. And that means they will be more likely to overcome the activation energy barrier and become our products. Now concentrations we see using these formulas affect or increase our rates. In other words, if we have higher concentration, if this guy becomes higher, this guy becomes higher, this guy becomes higher, and this guy becomes higher, our rates will increase. Now pressure also has an effect on rates, and we'll see how in another uh, video. Now, we spoke about elementary reactions in which reactants become products in a single step. Now there are also multi-step reactions, and those include many different steps, intermediate steps. However, we can use this guy or this formula to approximate our rates of multi-step reactions as long as the concentrations of intermediates are held relatively low. Now that means, suppose we have the following uh, reaction. A plus B react to form intermediate AB, and then that intermediate AB reacts with C, some other guy, to form ABC. Now this guy's our intermediate. Now as long as the concentration of this guy is kept relatively low, we can approximate using these formulas here. So likewise the rate of change or disappearance of A and B can be given by negative change in concentration of B divided by T. Now that only works if our intermediate concentration is kept low. Now let's talk about the rate law. The rate law is a mathematical representation that summarizes relationship between reactants and reaction rate. And it also builds a relationship between our rate constant and our rate of reaction. Now notice in this reaction we have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. Now we're only going to worry about the forward reaction. But know that if there is a forward reaction there could also be a reverse reaction. 
Now, let's look at the rate law. The rate law is this entire equation or relation. So rate of the forward reaction of this reaction is given by our rate constant Kf for the forward reaction times the concentration of x to the a power, in this case this a, times the concentration of y to the b power, b. Now the reason we chose a and b is because this is an elementary reaction. Now if this was not an elementary reaction, we would not be able to use this a and b the way we did here. Now for now we're only going to worry about elementary reactions. So this is our rate law. Now this Kf, our rate constant, depends strictly on temperature and types of reactants. It does not depend on the concentrations of reactants nor products. Now we saw from another video that Kf is known as the Arrhenius equation and it depends strictly on temperature. So at the same temperature we're going to use the same reactant for some given reaction. Now if we change our reactants, we're also going to have to change our Kf because our rate constant also depends on the types of reactants used. Now one last thing I want to mention is that this rate law, this equation, is determined strictly using experimental results. That's the only way we can determine this relation. We can't determine this relation using the formula above. We have to determine this formula using experiments. In my next lecture, we're going to see exactly how we determine our rate law from initial experimental results.